All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be working on the color wheel. We're going to be working on the color wheel for a couple of weeks. But as an introduction, we have a color wheel here. You should be familiar with the color wheel. I know you've talked about it, Mr. Haas' class. We have the primary colors, which are yellow, red, and blue. You should know that. Those are colors that cannot be made by mixing other colors together. That's why they are the primary colors. You, nothing you can do to create yellow. There is nothing you can do to create red. There is nothing you can do to create blue. Those are the primary colors. Now, if we mix the primary colors, we get the secondary colors. Green, violet, and orange. Red and yellow make orange. Yellow and blue make green. Blue and red make violet or purple. So that is the secondary colors, and you should know those colors as well. Then we have the tertiary colors. These are the colors in between the primary and secondary colors. So we have, starting from the top, blue purple or blue violet, red purple or red violet, red orange, yellow orange yellow green, and blue green. We are going to be talking about colors that are right next to each other. I know Mr. Haas calls them color neighbors. What they're actually called are analogous colors because they are right next to each other on a color wheel. So if I click on red right here and you look, oops, and you look over to the side here. It says analogous colors. I'm looking at the fourth thing down. Red, purple, or red, violet, and red, orange. If I go to yellow, on the fourth thing down, it says analogous colors, yellow, orange, and yellow, green. So that's the three colors that are the colors that are on either side of the color. So right here and right here, this would be an analogous color scheme. And for the red one, this would be an analogous color scheme. Or this would be an analogous color scheme. Whatever three colors are right next to each other on the color wheel, that would be an analogous color scheme. So an example of not an analogous color scheme would be, one second, let me erase this, would be these two colors plus this one. That is not an analogous color scheme. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to have you pick three colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. And in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how we're going to create a picture using only three colors. I'm going to be using red, red, violet, and violet for my analogous color scheme. So those three colors right there. Now, if you want to explore this color wheel a little bit more, I will give a link to it. You don't have to, but if you want to explore it some more. So join me on the next part of the video. Okay, for this next part of the video, we're gonna take our analogous color scheme, which I have right here. I have red, red, violet, and violet. And we are going to create a landscape using those three colors. Now this is all something that you should be familiar with. A landscape usually has a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. And we're gonna use all three of our colors to create those three areas. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take my pencil and I'm going to draw my horizon line. I'm gonna draw it lightly because I won't actually be needing it too much. Just so I know where my just so I know where my foreground, 
and or my sky meets the ground. So that's my horizon line. So something in the foreground is usually up close. It's really close to us. Okay? Like right now my hand is really close to you guys and it looks pretty big. If I bring it back, it looks smaller than it did before. Now it's in the background. And here would be the middle ground. Foreground, background, middle ground. Okay? That's just a little refresher. So you're going to think about things in a landscape. A landscape is a picture of land, remember, that would have foreground, middle ground, and background. We've all done these already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some mountains. Only I'm going to have a whole picture of mountains, okay? So I'm going to have one big mountain. Maybe I just see the mountain top in my foreground. And then behind that, maybe I have another mountain. But it's going to be smaller, remember? And they're going to overlap. So I have a whole a range. I have a whole mountain range going on here. Okay. So remember I said I didn't need my horizon line that much. I just want to make sure that I have the horizon line covered and I know that these mountains in the background are going to be smaller and farther away. Now you can do whatever you like. This is just an example. Maybe instead of mountains, I want to do standard horizon line and I'll have just the sky and I'll have a house in my middle ground and maybe a flower in my foreground. Remember, the flower should be bigger than the house because it's in the foreground. This is fine too. Okay, so then I have foreground, middle ground, and background. I'm gonna go back to my mountain one though because I like that. So I'm going to be using these three colors to show analogous with my mountain ranges. So I'm going to make my foreground be one color. I'm gonna make that red. Pro crayon tip. Color the edges of your area first and then go back and lightly color over everything and you want to overlap the different layers of your coloring and it will make a crayon coloring much more neat. You won't have all those streaky lines like sometimes you do when you color with a crayon. The key is to start off coloring lightly and then to color over top of it in many layers, just like you would layer your shirt. Don't worry about getting outside the lines too much. We are going to take a Sharpie or a marker at the end and go over those lines to kind of hide those. But I'm going to finish up real quick coloring my foreground and I'll be right back. All right, so those mountains are in the foreground. A good way to tell if it's something's in the foreground, if it's touching the bottom of your page, it's probably in the foreground. Then I'm gonna take my next color in the analogous color scheme. Remember it goes red, red, violet, and then violet. So I'm gonna use red, violet next, and I'm gonna cover color my middle ground mountains. So that would be like this one here, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So I'm going to color those five mountains, and I'll be right back. Okay, now I have my second color done. Now I'm going to move on to my background mountains, which I'm going to do in violet. Remember, it goes red, red, violet, and then violet. So I'm going to color all these mountains in the background. So those four mountains there with my violet color. So I'll do that and I will be right back. So now I have my mountains done. And you're like, Miss Corey, you didn't color the sky. That's right, I did not color the sky. That is because I'm gonna let you do what you want with the sky. Now you could color it 
a different color if you want. You can leave it white. I'm gonna color mine black and leave some spots just for the sky so that it looks like it's a nighttime thing. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I will be right back again. Okay, now that I have my sky colored and I left some stars and moons, I'm gonna go back over with my black crayon and I'm going to emphasize where these mountains are, just so I can get my lines back in there. I encourage you to do this too. You can use a Sharpie if you like, or you can use a black crayon like I'm doing. Whatever you want to do to emphasize those lines, just to make it look like the mountains aren't blending together so much. There we go. And there I have my simple analogous color scheme mountains. Pretty easy. Now I'm gonna show you two more examples of analogous color scheme pictures that you could do if you didn't wanna do a mountain range. So for this one, I did violet for the foreground, red violet for the middle ground, and red for the background. Now because the foreground, the grass, or whatever this ground is right here, the actual physical ground goes from the foreground to the middle ground and it stops when it gets to the background and if you want to go over your horizon line with a red with my with your background color that's perfectly fine I blended them I used both colors together and I lightly put one color down whichever the middle ground one was so my red violet and then I went over top and blended with my violet color so that it goes from the middle ground to the foreground. So that's a second example. All right, here's another example of an analogous color screen image. Now for this one, I changed up the analogous colors. Instead, I used blue, blue green, and green. That is also an analogous color scheme. And I just did a sailboat scene at night. So you can see that you can do a simple landscape using just three colors to create three different images. One, two, three. Pretty simple. And it does look like it's going back into space because I have used all three of those colors. All right. I hope you have fun making your analogous color schemes. When you're finished, please turn it into Google Classroom. There is another video that shows you how to turn in an image onto Google Classroom. If you need help, feel free to ask. I hope you have fun, guys. Thanks for watching.